he's not afraid to tell it how it is. And that means a lot because everybody else is. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Better Food Book Reviews. I'm your host, Clifford Lee Sargent. Great to see you as always. We made it. Get that coffee. Still alive here. Mm. Some quick housekeeping. I am now on Odyssey, which is a crypto-based YouTube alternative with less emphasis on ads and censorship. I'm partially sponsored by them, sort of. So if you're interested, you can check that out by following the link below. And uh, I think they're pretty cool. Well, my friends, here we are. Wherever that is in what appears to be an even more bizarre year than the previous, here in the States at least. After a while, you just kind of reach a level of adaptable chaos fatigue, and I feel like I'm ready for whatever's around the corner. Bring it. But while last year was god-awfully terrible for many people, and continues to stretch its slimy tentacles into this one as well, I read some fantastic books, and I hope you did too, and I hope it was because of this channel. But I know we're all strapped for time. We can't always read all the books we want to, so I've compiled my personal favorites as sort of a cheat sheet, if you just want to get to the best of the best, at least according to me. And really quick, please leave your favorite books of 2020 in the comments below. And we can all share what we've discovered last year. I'm sure there's tons of stuff that I haven't heard of that people love. As I imagine a lot of us got more reading time than we expected. I know I did. So without further ado, here are my five favorite books that I read in 2020. Starting off with number five, A Cup of Rage by the Brazilian author Hadwan Nassar. This is a short, savage day in the life of a Brazilian farmer who's having kind of a torrid, passionate affair with a journalist. They're sort of warring ideologically, even though they're very attracted to each other, it seems. After some leaf cutter ants eat a hole in a hedge that he's cultivated, like put a lot of effort into, uh, spent a bunch of time with it, he gets upset and they start getting into a fight. And this fight kind of becomes a, an all-encompassing philosophical and ideological battle between the sexes, revealing the fundamental differences and the shortcomings on both their parts. But you know how when you get really angry, you're not that sharp or articulate? At least it's my experience. If I'm enraged, I'm very dumb. But imagine if in fact it was the opposite and you had this hyper-focus that kicked in, allowing you to put things together quickly, complex ideas, in order to destroy the opposing force. That's what happens to both these characters, it seems. It's almost like a what if men and women were able to put together and articulate all of the complex thoughts in their head when they were furious. I just loved it. I thought it was unlike any other book I've ever read. I'm not one who really loves conflict. You know, it's not like I enjoy watching people fight, but um, the ideas being kind of put out there and thrown against each other were so interesting to me. I thought it was a smart, tightly controlled explosion of a book with agricultural sexual metaphors that are somehow pulled off. I don't know. Hadwan Nassar himself actually stopped writing in order to become a farmer after some books of his became successful. And I find that fascinating. I think that's, uh, that's, that's a wise idea. I'm looking forward to reading his other one, Ancient Tillage. Anyways, really enjoyed it. Better than food. Number four, Act of Passion by the Belgian crime writer Georges Simenon. This was a recommendation from a very good friend and patron, Aisha. Thanks a lot. It's like the film Brief Encounter meets Psycho or some Hitchcock film in this region of France called the Vendée. The book it's most similar to would be Camus' The Stranger, but in some cases I think personally it's better. Written in the first person, the unreliable narrator is a doctor who's having an affair, and the book is a confession of murder. I've called it a romantic psychological film noir thriller. It's a story of a man who has given up and acquiesced to a normal life of work, routine, and duty. Suppressed his pain and desire, it seems. For, for anything more. Then all of a sudden he sees his one chance at a passionate love, but something in his desire is desperate, ill, and twisted. Something about him is off. And he ends up destroying it, his shot at love. This woman named uh, Martine. And uh, we know from the beginning, you know, that he's, that he's killed her. Structurally, the book is very interesting because it all leads up to the very last page or the second to last, that's when the murder takes place, I think, and uh, it doesn't ruin it at all. I mean, the, the, the structure is really compelling. It's a pretty classic setup, a man's descent into obsession over a woman he desires, but the manipulative frame that Simonon employs is very impressive. As we gradually begin to realize that we're reading the calm words of a deranged murderer, he seems so sympathetic in the beginning, but gradually as his actions are revealed, it's like, whoa, okay, this guy is, you know, I, I don't know, I enjoyed that. Impressive, atmospheric, definitely unsettling. Henry Miller was a fan. Number three, The Peregrine. A man's bird-watching journal, but so much more. 
The Vernon Herzog recommended story by the English author J.A. Baker was the surprise of the year for me. And you know, amidst all the other surprises, that's, that's saying something. As what seemed to be at first something pretty damn dry, a man's journal he keeps while watching a peregrine uh, around the English countryside, turned out to be the most inspired, vivid, blood-drenched, pagan, lust for life narrative that I may have ever come across. It's really right up there with stuff like Equus and Amishima and Story of the Eye. It's intense writing, and while it does suffer from one crime, which would be that of repetition, definitely slogs, it gets bogged down in some parts, uh, it's worth the struggle. A truly unique book, and one that actually made me look at the world and birds differently. I think I'm more afraid of them after I've realized that they're sort of built for one thing, the peregrines at least. Swift, efficient, killing. It's the literary equivalent of nature is metal on Instagram. Really quick, a great free way to help the show would be to give a thumbs up and subscribe. It helps the algorithm and would help this video get to people who would love these books. Thanks a bunch. Number two, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas by Hunter S. Thompson. I think it was my friend and patron Sam who finally inspired me to get to this one. I think Walden picked it up last year as well and really enjoyed it. I grew up in a household with Thompson on the shelf, so I'm I'm surprised and a little embarrassed that it took me this long. Without question, this is one of the greatest books ever written. Definitely at least one of the greatest American novels ever written. Unless you hate sex, drugs, and fun, of course, in which case 2020 was probably a blast for you. Good luck. Actually, it's just drugs, really. Just a lot of drugs. Hunter S. Thompson's magnum opus, which was really the greatest thing he's ever done, is a reflection on the shattered idealism of the 60s peace movement and a descent into the bowels of the weirdest damn city ever to have been spawned in America. Las Vegas, Nevada. As two strange souls, the alter ego of Thompson, Raul Duke, and Dr. Gonzo, imbibe enough substances to kill a small army, and completely deranged, are unleashed upon the unsuspecting public in hotels and casinos. Their mission? Get to the heart of the American dream. Sure, it's a madcap adventure rife with drug humor and jokes, but that's just the frosting of the cake, the mescaline-filled cake. The far more tragic element, the real core of the book, is uh, Raoul Duke's realization that the American dream, this whole endeavor, is, uh, is totally fucked. And that's what makes the book better than food. The whole part where he's talking about almost being able to see where the wave broke and rolled back. Brilliant. Brilliant, 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 brilliant writing. And just structurally, you know, the, in the writing itself, there is no other novel, not even On the Road by Kerouac, that moves as fast as Fear and Loathing. It is actually the literary equivalent of amphetamines. Relentless, hysterical, tragic, exceptional. Just one of the greatest books of all time. Excellent book, better than food. And number one, of course, number one. Oh God, I think. Of course. You knew it was gonna be it. I mean, The Stand. <laughs> No. Serotonin by the French author Michel Houellebecq. It was, it was one of the best books written recently. It was my favorite book of 2020 by far. Houellebecq writes stories of modern men battling depressing existential elements of the modern era. Modern European men, I should say. And he always seems to be one step ahead, uh, predicting events before they actually happen. And everything from the general malaise of the characters to the political demonstration of the French farmer involving a gruesome suicide during a protest and the despair and being unable to remedy the past and seriously considering just destroying what's left of the ones who left you. All of it is perfect for the worst year that we've collectively experienced. It sums up the tone and feeling to a T. I mean, I'm not an optimist, but I'm not a pessimist either. I oscillate back and forth and, you know, kind of just to find myself on one side depending on how much sleep I've gotten. To adhere to a specific label, to pledge allegiance to anything is exhausting. I mean, you could call me a realist, but what the hell is that? It's about a man who's depressed and taking antidepressants and nothing's working and he kind of goes on a journey, sort of revisiting the loves in his life that he lost or, or moved away from and uh, his old friends uh, and just seeing kind of like the disintegration of the industry that he was involved in, which was agriculture in France and uh, it's, it's brutal. It's a tremendously brutal book. Deeply disturbing book. I mean, filled with doom, basically. Um, but that's the spirit of the age, I feel. There's, there's kind of no getting around it. <laughs> so, so for that reason, I really, I really enjoy Welbeck's writing and stories because he doesn't mince words. He's not afraid to tell it how it is. And that means a lot because Everybody else is. This is what I like about Welbeck. His agenda seems clear to me. Write the most viciously authentic, honest, and humorous book that captures the disappointed, disillusioned spirit of this new, bizarre, self-censoring, self-aggrandizing, self-flagellating, and far too often self-pleasuring 
paranoid, seemingly dynamic, but in reality just sophomoric, new world. He has really captured the atmosphere of this new age. Hopeless, but safe. Meaningless, but entertained. Full of despair, but polite. They'll read his books in the future and just simply mutter, Jesus, the poor fools. But you know, I'm not entirely serious, right? You know, every generation has its own apocalypse. To me, Welbeck is really seemingly the last great author, with one foot in the 20th century and one foot in the 21st. And by his very existence and work, uh, proof of the total lack of fresh blood, as far as books are concerned, and the impending doom to which all literary talent or potential literary talent may succumb. Gazing back on the era's past, in a kind of perpetual drooling like a dog forever staring at a stake behind six inches of plexiglass, it's because of distraction. And also just kind of like the complexity of modern life. I think in the blurb it said, you know, the character is kind of like wanting to go back to a simpler time. Yeah, like, sign me up. Sign a lot of us up, I think. You know, I think really it's probably gonna be like a, a rejection of new technology that's going to, to occur, like a real, authentic backlash. I mean, I know that sounds radical and it's like, who could possibly say we don't want more services? But yeah, I mean, people think that's losing something, but in reality, so much is being taken away from us that uh, I think we're going to want it back. We'll see. I'm just joking, of course. There is and will be good stuff to come. But it is strange when you look at the time and effort that seems to have gone into masterpieces of the past and I'm just not convinced yet that authors these days have that kind of stamina. I'm just bitching. You know, I, I'm one to talk. I'm no good at writing. But I sort of wonder sometimes, you know, uh, kind of reading all these books uh, about where it's all going. This is what I love about Welbeck, right? Because this is what everybody else will not do. Welbeck tells us the truth that is probably the deepest fear that we're all waking up to and losing sleep over. And that is this. It's not guaranteed to get better. It is not guaranteed to get better better. That is the truth. And that doesn't matter if you're 20, it doesn't matter if you're 75. And while that sucks beyond words, I get it, I really appreciate somebody having the balls to say it. Because it means you have to make some changes. I find it not only liberating in some ways, but also motivating. Also, the book, I mean, is frequently hysterical. It's like super dry humor, it's like really just goes there. <laughs> it does not, and it's bold. I mean, it's really, he doesn't hold back. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. It's definitely not for everybody, but it's Absolutely for me. My wife and I have, you know, significantly different taste in books, but she also really enjoyed this, although it did, you know, it, it did get her down for a while. So those were my favorites, but there are some honorable mentions for sure. Transparent Things by Vladimir Novikov, that is patron only. You can see it for a dollar or more if you go to Patreon in the link below, as well as Havoc by Tom Christensen. The Sound and the Fury by William Faulkner. I just didn't like it as much as Absalom Absalom. I think because of the structural experimentation. I gotta say it was more frustrating than enjoyable in retrospect. Thus Were Their Faces by Silvino Campo had some good moments. And finally, Fernanda Melchor's Hurricane Season, which is just a dope horror crime story about a witch in a very dangerous small town in Mexico. That was just great. That was, that was great. I will say that indeed, the most realistic portrayal of the lockdown pandemic thing we're all experiencing, but on a much larger scale, was Stephen King's The Stand. Though The Plague by Albert Camus was actually the, the better book of the two, I think. Of the two, I read about diseases uh, and is about one-tenth the length as well. But how about you? What did you think? What were your favorite reads of 2020? Please leave them in the comments below and maybe I'll get to them. Thanks a bunch. All the links for the books are below and you can help the show for free by just using the links to buy them or anything off of Amazon. The show will get a kickback at no extra cost to you. Thank you so much. Also, the mugs are for sale below if you're interested. Cheers. Coffee time. For those of you who are new, I take all the names of the patrons on Patreon who have donated $5 or more per video to the show. I place their names in this mason jar and I pull out a name for every review. Whoever's name I pull out, I send them a hard copy of the book I'm reviewing, plus a bag of coffee, usually roasted by yours truly, but lately roasted by one of the wonderful roasters here in Portland, Oregon, because of the pandemic, and it's good to help support small businesses. The coffee is delicious, and if you would like to get in on that, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash books are better than food, or click the link below and donate $5 or more per video. $1 or more per video will get you access to the patron-only reviews, the Discord channel, which is excellent, Tons of great recommendations happening there. And the Better Than Friday newsletter that I send out every Friday for patrons, which is just five different things that I'm interested in at any given time. Could be books in the pipeline, music, films, articles, changes week to week. If you think we have similar taste, I think you'll get a lot of value out of that. All right, thank you very much to all the new patrons. I sincerely appreciate it. And thank you, of course, to the longtime patrons for making this possible. Best of luck to you all. Okay, here we go. First, last, and always. Thank you very much, first, last. I really appreciate it. You're going to receive whichever of the books I've mentioned that you would like, plus some coffee. Hope you love both.
Thank you so much. Well, that's all I've got for you today. If you would like to sign up for the Patreon thing, then I'm going to post my to be read for 2021. Just a list of books that I hope to get to for 2021. I didn't do so good for 2020, so hopefully I'll do better this year. But uh, yeah, I'm sure there'll be tons of good stuff on there. Please always remember to bring a book. Take care of yourselves. Have a great night. Great to see you as always. Talk to you soon. Ciao.